emergency, 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 in one of the fueling tanks. There's someone hurt down there. They don't start fueling again until I get back. I know what the fault was. You're not going back there. Not until I have a, had a look at you anyway. Oh, don't worry about me. Easy now. Well, that's it. Ian, see the preparations for takeoff tonight. Go ahead as planned. Very good, sir. Dad, what happened? Wedgwood, are you all right? I'm just a bit shaken, that's all. Oh, let's hope that's all it is. Seems to be something wrong with his arm. Let's have a look. Oh. oh, I think this arm's broken. Don't try to move it. I'll get you down for x-ray. I don't make too much of it, Doctor. I've got to be on that rocket tonight. Oh, you won't be there or anywhere else. I'll have to keep you under observation. I'll just warn the hospital now. Doctor, that rocket's time to take off for 11.30 tonight. And it's going to take off. Wait, well, you can't go to the moon with a broken arm. Henderson, we've already got the supply satellite in orbit around the moon. We shan't have such a favorable chance again for another month. But, Dad, you can't go like this. You heard what the doctor said. I'm afraid you need another pilot, Watson. Uh, yes, Dr. McPherson here. But, Dad, we haven't on got another pilot. Yeah. There's only one other person who's had experience of flying these rockets. Well, I can't Isn't there, Henderson? Oh, oh, now, don't look at me. I just came here to cover the takeoff of my newspaper. Yeah, I seem to remember you. that's all you did last time. That didn't stop you piloting a rocket to the moon and back? Oh, no, I... I suppose I could go, yes. Go on, Mr. Henderson. You did it before. Yeah, but just a minute, Wedgwood. And why can't Hawkins pilot the expedition? Well, he isn't even here yet. He hasn't got... He was held up on his way from Australia. You know, there seems to be in a jinx on this right from the start. And that leaves Mary Meadows. And me as radio operator. Well, yes, I suppose if you really feel I'm qualified. And you wouldn't want Mary to carry all that responsibility alone, would you? Good, that's settled then. I've called a briefing conference for six o'clock this evening. You'll let me attend that, won't you, Doctor? All right. I'll give you something to keep you going till takeoff. Thanks. For the moment, I'd like you to have this. Oh, uh, you better get Jeff to show you that new equipment in the meantime. All right, of course. Cool. Hey, wait a minute. I just remembered something. With my 12-year-old niece, Margaret. Do you remember I asked for another permit? Well, I promised to let her see the takeoff. Oh, well, she'll be able to see it all right. Yes, I know, but it's not quite as simple as that. You see, I'm in charge of her while my brother's abroad. Well, don't worry. We'll look after her. <laughs> oh, you don't know Margaret. No, miss. But I'm afraid you must let me in. I'm sorry, miss. I have my instructions. Strict security. You can't go into the main control room. Will you read this, please? I know what it says, miss. Will you read it aloud, please? I, the Minister of Science, request and require in the name of Her Majesty's government all those whom it may concern to allow the bearer to pass freely without let or hindrance. Does this concern you? Of course it does, miss. Then stop hindering me. Uh, look, miss. Not even everyone who works on Buchan Island can go in here. It's reserved for special people. Oh, all right, Master Jeff. Hey, what's special about you? Oh, this huh? is Professor Wedgwood's son. Well, I'm Conway Henson's niece. And he told me to wait in the main control room. But he won't let me in here. Oh, that's all right. My father's expecting her. Oh, all right you are then, miss. Thank you. And she's going to be a right problem when she grows up. You better keep your eye on her, Jip. Girl. <laughs> Where'd that girl go? Look behind the moon. OK, I'll be right there. Oh, there you are. Oh, hello. Where was it you landed before? Uh, one rocket there, the Sea of Vapors, and the other rocket there, the Sea of Showers. Oh, I should have thought scientifically there would have been more value in landing north of the lunar equatorial line. Oh, yes, well, you see, you just can't go and land anywhere. I mean, it was an amazing thing we made a landing at all. Really? 
Well, what did you intend to do? Well, you seem to know an awful lot about it. My uncles told me all about it, and we discussed it in science class. Are, are you interested in science, then? I'm going to be a scientist. Are you going on this moon expedition tonight? Yes, I'm in charge of the radio and radar. Hmm. And do you know anything about it? Well, I bet I know a lot more than you do. I've been studying radio theory for a year. Well, that's different theory. Anyone can learn that at school. But when you're up in a rocket and you don't know which way up you are, it's a pretty tough job. And girls are tougher than boys. Come over here. I want to show you something. You see that rocket out there? Yes. Do you know how big that is? About 80 feet high? It's nearer 100, and seven-eighths of it is filled with fuel. There's enough fuel in that rocket to blow this island to smithereens. You see that nose cone at the top? Yes. That's where I'll be, right on top, sitting on top of all that fuel. It's pretty high up, isn't it? Don't you like heights, then? Well, they're all right if you don't look down. Then you wouldn't be much good in a rocket, would you? Have you ever had a dream that you're falling, falling all night and nothing to hold you up? Yes, sometimes. Well, that's what it's like all the time in outer space. And any minute you're likely to be hit by meteorites or lose your way and then you'll fly on forever. Theory is not much good then. Without theory, Jeff, we'd never get off the ground at all. Now, let's try and stop trying to frighten our young guest. So you're the niece I've been hearing all about. Yeah, well, I'm Norman Wedgwood. How do you do? Oh, how do you do, Margaret? Your uncle has got some news for you. Well, you see, Margaret, too. there's been a bit of a crisis here. Well, not to beat about the bush. I'm going up with the expedition tonight. Oh, but, Uncle, you promised to take me salmon fishing. Well, yes, I know, but, well, the rocket can't wait. Oh, but, Uncle, you promised me. Now, look, Margaret, this is terribly important. There are two eminent scientists coming, one from Australia, one from Canada. Couldn't I come, we... too? Don't be silly. Be scared to death. No, I wouldn't. I don't think it's as frightening as you say. Oh, please, Uncle. Well, what do you think about that, Wedgwood? Well, we really can't have any passengers. No. Oh, but I wouldn't be a passenger. There's all sorts of things I could do. Such as? I could look after supplies, I can cook, and I know first aid. <laughs> well, what do you say? Well, you sound pretty competent to me. I think you'll be a great asset, if your uncle doesn't mind. Well, I don't oh, really good. know. Oh, good. That's settled. Mm. Come on, I'd better show you the compression chamber. Yes, and I'll have to be fitted for a spacesuit, too. <laughs> Ah, here's Professor Meadows. How are you, Mary? Oh, well, I'm Mary. right, but how are you, Norman? I just got back and heard the news. Oh, not too bad, thanks, but it's no rocket trip for me this time. Henderson's taking over. Yeah, so you can stop us adding to attention. Oh, do you mind? <laughs> Is Professor Hawkins here yet? Mm, he's arriving this afternoon. By the way, what about his pre-flight training? Oh, he did all that before he left Australia. Probably knows more about it than any of us. <laughs> Guess he should be getting into press trips just about now. <laughs> Please. My name's Hawkins, Thank Professor you. Hawkins. You wanted me? Oh, yes, sir. There's a gentleman, please. Yes. Professor Hawkins, yes. I'm from Buchan Island. Oh, really? I didn't know I was being met. I'm afraid there's a slight change of plans. The launching won't take place tonight. Professor Wedgwood has had to fly to London, and he wants you to meet him there, at the Minister of Science, at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. What's gone wrong? I'm afraid, sir, I can't explain that here for security reasons. Your security, are you? Well, what are my chances of getting aboard a plane to London tonight? It's getting a bit late, isn't Don't it? Don't worry, sir. Your plane leaves in five minutes. Here is your ticket, and you'll find that a telecommodation has been reserved for you at this address. Oh, well, off we go again. A little trip to London won't do me any harm. Uh, one other thing, sir. We'd appreciate it very much if between uh, now and tomorrow morning, you won't make contact with anyone, particularly what? not the press. Oh, if I'm going to London, I'll just spend the evening with a few friends. Terribly sorry, sir. Not even that. May no I have your all. attention, please? Here is an announcement. I see. For passengers on overseas airways, flight number 733. Oh, well, I'd better hurry. Yes. London, would Have you a good trip, sir. Leave of your friends, collect your hand baggage, and follow the green light through door number 7. All passengers on flight mm. number 732 to London, please follow the green light. 
me Prestwick 4325, please. Scotia Car Hire Service? I'm at the airport. I want a car to take me to Buckenhead in time to catch the ferry to Bucken Island. Name? My name is Hawkins. Professor Hawkins. Well, Hamlet, that's it. This will have to last you till after the takeoff. You're going to be our stowaway this time. Richard! Master Jeff is in there, Miss. Oh, thank you. Oh, hello. What are you doing, Jeff? Uh, just, just packing for the trip. Oh, I'm already packed. Why aren't your brother and sister coming? And they went last time, didn't they? Yes, well, that put them behind with their schoolwork, so they can't come this time. Besides, I'm the only one with a real job to do. Are you taking this? People from other planets. Chapter one, the Martians are amongst us. You don't really read this sort of stuff, do you? Do you believe all this about people living on Mars? Well, it's possible. I mean, we don't know very much about the other planets. But we know that Mars is a dead planet. A dying right, planet. Dying. But it can't support animal life anymore, even if it ever did. You know everything, don't you? I know that much. Everyone knows that. If there are Martians, and they can see the Earth, what would they see from 60 million 59 miles away? 59 million. All right then, 59 million. All they'd see is cloud, water, a bit of green. What would they tell from that? They wouldn't know we existed. They wouldn't be able to see a, a railway, a town, a road or anything from that distance. Yes, but we've observed Mars. We know that it's not possible for life. Only perhaps for some vegetation or maybe some very tiny creatures. I hope you're not going to argue all the way to the moon. You know, there might be something in what this book says. We just don't know. Hey, come on, we're missing the briefing conference. Now, not only are we going to continue the research work we started on our previous trip to the moon, but we want to test out certain new types of equipment, and above all, to set up an observatory on the moon. But that will be Professor Hawkins' pigeon. If he ever arrives. Now, with even a small telescope on the moon, we shall be able to study details of the other planets, and Hawkins will be able to make observations that up to now have been impossible because of the atmosphere here around our Earth. Now, as you know, three days ago we launched from here a supply satellite containing food, fuel supplies and equipment for your stay on the moon. That satellite is now in orbit around the moon. It'll be your job, Henderson, to link up with that before landing. That's not going to be an easy job. Well, even finding it won't be easy, will it? Well, we should be able to help you by radio from the Earth. Now, uh, You'll aim to land here, in the Sea of Serenity, where Professor Hawkins is going to set up the observatory. By the way, shouldn't he be here by now? There's only a few hours to take off. Yes. Ian, get on to Prestwick, will you, and see when he's arrived? Right away, sir. Now, uh, any other questions? Because this is your last chance. Oh, yes. This, this new fuel that you had a spot of trouble with this morning. I mean, just how powerful is it? Well, it's powerful enough to take you for a far longer journey than to the moon, but that's leaving you plenty in reserve. Yes, but what I really meant is how safe is it? <laughs> it depends which end of the rocket you're at. <laughs> but it's as safe as any other aspect of the journey. Mm. Restwick Airport, I'd like to check if Flight 462 has arrived from Canada. The passenger's name is Professor Hawkins. I see. Hold on a minute, William. <sighs> Hawkins, Hawkins. Ah, yes, Professor Hawkins. Professor Hawkins flew in three hours ago. No, not at all. Thank you. Oh, just a moment, caller. Professor Hawkins flew on to London on flight num... Hello? Hello? Hang up. He arrived all right. The plane was in time. That means he'd be here at 11 o'clock. Good. Well, on these roads? It's cutting a bit fine, isn't it? Well, he, he knows exactly what to do once he gets here. What's Hawkins like? I've only read about him. Yeah, come to that, I've never set eyes on him either. Well, actually, I haven't seen him for ten years, not since he went to Australia. But I think you'll all like him. Now, any other questions? All right. And report to the rocket at 11.15. Meantime, try and get some rest. And good luck. Thanks, Thanks Wendy. You look after that. Good listening. Well, you're getting excited, Margaret. I'm looking forward to it, Professor. Yes. And aren't you even just a little bit scared? Why should everybody think I'm frightened? Well, because the rest of us are. 
Anyway, we've got a few hours, so let's try and get some sleep, eh? Well, I was thinking of watching what went on in here before the tape was. Well, for one thing, you won't understand it, and neither do I. But most important of all, they don't want any of us to get under their feet. Because this is the real nerve center of the whole operation. From now on, everyone in here is going to be keyed up to screaming points. <laughs> Okay, Bill, bring in number three fuel truck now. Bring in number three fuel truck. And zero four five. Well, I'll take over now, Ian. Everything's under control, sir. Thank you. I'll just wait here with you, Wedgwood. Thank you, Doctor. You sit down here, Doctor. You won't be Time there. check. Thank you. Eleven one and twenty seconds. Main control room to fueling base. Twenty-eight and a half minutes to zero. Wind velocity? Wind velocity over Buckham Island, 22 knots. Direction 045 degrees. Hello, elevation control. Compensate for wind, 045 degrees, 22 knots. Rocket crew ready to enter compression chamber. Wedgwood to rocket crew. Enter compression chamber and then proceed to rocket nose cone. Well, you see, Margaret, we and all this are what is called the payload. It takes an awful lot of rocket to get us off the ground. All right, Margaret, you stay there. I'm just going up to check the controls. Call from Joddle Bank, sir. Will you confirm takeoff time is 11.30? They want to start tracking. Yes, confirm for 11.30. Any news of Hawkins? He's at the main gate now, sir. And about time, too. Tell him to come straight up to main control room. The rest of the crew are all in the nose cone now, sir. All right, time check. 15 minutes to zero. Clear fueling base. Stand by to ignite primary motors. What's that? Well, that's just the motors. Just the motors? You wait till the secondary motors go off. Quiet, Jeff. There. Now, just try and relax. What's it like just as we take off? Well, you'll feel very heavy. Nine times heavier than you feel now. But you won't know much about it because you'll black out. Don't try to resist going unconscious. What'll it be like when I come round? Well, when we're in free flight, you'll have no weight at all. Yeah, that's why we wear these magnetic boots. They hold us to the ground. Otherwise, we just float around. Oh, well, I'd love to say that. Nose cone to main control room. We are now in position, but we're still one man short. Over. He's on his way. Over. Where the devil is he? He's in the compression chamber, sir. Oh, He's no been through room. flight routine and has all his gear. All right. Main control room to compression chamber. Hello, Hawkins. This is Wedgwood. I hope to see you before you went, but uh, never mind. Continue now straight to nose cone. See you when you get back. And good luck. It fits perfectly. Hello, Henderson. Hawkins entering rocket now. Over. Four minutes to zero. All right. Clear gantries. Stand by to ignite Three secondary. Stand, Stand by to ignite secondary okay. motors. Gantries going away now. Ah, Professor, huh? you're just in time. Well, I'm Conway Henderson, uh, leader of this expedition. Oh, well, glad to meet you, Henderson. Oh, yes, of course, you probably don't know about the change of plans. What? I've had to take over from Wedgwood. Oh, Wedgwood? Why, was he going on this expedition? Yeah. Well, he's uh, an old friend of yours, isn't he? Uh, well, uh, yes, yes. Uh, but this is a disappointment. Yes, well, you better get down on your takeoff couch quickly. Yes. You know the drill, of course. Yes.
Mary Professor, you sit back into it and fasten yourself in like this. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Fancy him not knowing the truth. Shh. 15 seconds to zero. Relax, Joe. I'll call you again at 2,000 miles. 10. Over. Nine. Right, thanks. We're standing by. Over and out. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Receiving you loud and clear. Henderson here. Over. Henderson, you are now in free flight. Everybody all right? Over. Yes, I think so. Hold on a bit. Everybody all right down there? Jolly good takeoff. What about Professor Hawkins? Professor Hawkins? Are you all right, Professor Hawkins? Who? Uh, oh, yes, yes, I'm all right. All present and correct. Yes, we're all fine up here. We'll call you back when we've done an instrument check. Over and out. Where are we? About 2,000 miles, huh? 2,000 miles? Oh, I feel so nice. I feel like I could tilt up to the ceiling. Oh, you will if you don't watch out. Temperature reading normal. Internal temperature at 65, normal. Can I help? Why, oh, yes, as a matter of fact, you can, Professor. Yeah. You know, it'd be a good thing if you knew how to control this rocket just in case. Yes, it would. Well, this, of course, is a radio telephone. Yeah. And over here are the main motor controls. Yeah. Well, you can go there, Jeff. Oh, this is Hamlet. He really belongs to my brother, Jimmy. But I promised to bring him along as a sort of a mascot. He's been to the moon twice before. Isn't he sweet? And can I hold him? Yes, well, don't let him go, or he'll float up to the ceiling. Remember, we've got no gravity in here. But he doesn't know that. How do you do, Hamlet? I'm Margaret. And we do a two-hourly check of all instruments and gauges, mm -hmm. some of which are down in the main cabin. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going down to complete that now. Well, I'll stay here and have a look around. Right, fine. <laughs> Earth rocket calling sector 10. Earth rocket calling sector 10. The first stage of our plan is now completed. Yeah. <laughs> 